Welcome to the CSRX Docker Fundamentals Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this Learning Byte, you will be able to use Docker to launch a CSRX instance. The CSRX is a containerized version of our SRX Series Services Gateway, designed primarily to protect container workloads. So the example use case I have demonstrated at the bottom is I have a, an application. Uh, it's a containerized web application. And so I have several you know, web containers, and every web application always talks to a database back end. Well, since these are containerized resources that I need to secure, I have traffic coming in from the Internet. I want to protect my web containers. When those web containers communicate with my back end database services, I also want to secure that traffic. And so this is a perfect example of spinning up, when I spin up these web front ends and my database back ends, I can also orchestrate and instantiate some CSRX instances to protect secure traffic from the internet, reaching my front end web application, and then the communications going back to my database back end. So full, you know, layer seven advanced security services available in a containerized format that I can deploy in a couple of seconds. Now to deploy a CSRX instance, I used, uh, I have a Windows laptop. I installed Docker Desktop for Windows. There's a version for Mac. There's also a Linux version. And then I downloaded the CSRX image from the Juniper Support Downloads website. I'll show you the image in a minute. And then we will use Docker commands to create the necessary networks and launch the CSRX instance. And then once the CSRX instance is launched to, to get all the functionality out of it, you're going to need a software license, and then you're going to need to apply some configuration. Here's the example CSRX container we're going to build. We're going to launch, uh, use Docker to launch a CSRX instance, and we're going to create three Docker networks. One of them will be the management network. We'll create, use the Docker network create command. We'll create a management network. Then I'm going to have two transit networks. I'm going to create one of them I'm going to call the untrust network. You can call the network whatever you'd like, but we'll use Docker network create and create an untrust network and a trust network and a management network. Now, on the interfaces that are going to process transit traffic, if you want the CSRX to perform NAT functions, which is a common feature, when you create the Docker networks, you must enable IP masquerading so the CSRX is capable, or it enables the CSRX uh, to perform NAT functions. We'll use the Docker run command to launch the container, and then we'll use the Docker network connect command to connect the transit networks to the VSRX instance and assign IP addresses to these two transit interfaces. I have the commands we're going to use to create or launch the CSRX container in this notepad document. These are the three networks. We're going to use the Docker network create command. We can create a network called, in this case, MGMT underscore net. This is a variable. You can create the network. You can name the network however you choose. You do not have to specify a subnet to be associated. Docker will automatically generate or assign a 172.17 uh, subnet to the first network that you create. But I wanted a little more control, so we're going to define the actual management subnet range. These, then I will create two transit networks. This would be the untrust network. And again, you could name the networks whatever you'd like. This is the subnet I want associated with that untrust network. Here's my trust network and the associated subnet. And since these are transit interfaces, I won't want to enable IP masquerading on those interfaces. And this will, again, enable the CSRX instance to perform NAT functions. The CSRX instance requires a couple of Docker volumes for storage. One, to store its configuration information. You, you can name. We'll use the Docker volume create. You'll name the config volume, whatever you'd like. And we also need another volume for the CSRX log information. So we'll use two Docker volume create commands for that. And then we use Docker run, and this will launch the container instance. Uh, it'll run in detached mode, which means once you run this command, you get your prompt back. The name of the container will be CSRX01. The host name in the Juno CLI will automatically be set to the same value. It runs in privileged mode. When it launches, it will connect itself. The management interface on this container instance will connect to the management network that we defined earlier in the process. The dash V option will attach the two volumes, the config volume and the log volume to the container. This is the only allowed CSRX image size or container size that's permitted. It's large. 
Now, this is a, a nice option, this CSRX port number. I only need three interfaces on this container instance. I need a management interface and a Giggy 000 interface that I want to attach to the untrust network and a Giggy 001 interface that I want to attach, attach to the trust network. You can specify up to 15 transit interfaces on each container CSRX container instance. So there's a lot there, but I only need to connect to a couple of networks here transit-wise and a management network. So that's the number of ports I want in my container instance. The root password will automatically be set to, to this value, and there will be a console that I'll be able to connect to and, and, and then look around, load config, you know, perform operations on the container once it's launched. And then once it's launched, I connect my untrust network that we defined a little bit earlier. And I also assign an IP address to the first container interface on that network. 10.0, the first IP address is reserved by Docker for the gateway IP address to route traffic out of this subnet. And so the first IP address available to me to, to assign to a CSRX interface is, is dot two. And so the, we'll connect the container to the untrust network and we'll assign the Giggy 000 interface, that IP address. And then we'll also connect the trust network to that container and we'll assign 10.10.0.2 as the IP address for the first interface, the Giggy 001 interface on that container. And then we'll use the Docker exec command to connect to the container instance and look around. So first, let's make the network. Let me copy this Docker network create command. And we'll go to the command prompt and we'll begin the process. Here's my command prompt. I already, as I mentioned earlier, downloaded the Docker image from our support website. This is the name of the image. It's about 250 megs in size. Then once I've downloaded the image, you will use the docker load-i command and, and the image name, and this will uncompress that downloaded image and store it in your local Docker image repository. I've already done the docker load step it took about a minute, and so it's not very fun to watch during a, a learning byte, but I can run the docker image ls command to list all of my images. And here's the CSRX image that was uncompressed and placed in my local docker image repository. And so this is the container image that we will launch, right? So first, I wanted to... I lost the docker network command there. Let me copy this. We'll go back and we'll create the management network. Then I'll come back and create, let me copy, whoops, let me copy this line. And we'll create the untrust network. Prompt. Let's go back and get our trust network. Docker network create command. Paste that back in there. So now I've created the management network, the untrust network, the trust network. So those are the three networks and, and the three subnets I wanted to create. Now I want to go back and create the volumes. There's two commands. To save time, I use the double ampersands to combine these two Docker volume create commands together. So I can just copy this line and paste it in to the prompt, to the command prompt, and, and it'll automatically run both of those for me just to save us some time. There's the config and the var log volume. Now, once the networks and the volumes are created, we can run, which means we're gonna launch our container. So we'll copy this, paste that command in. And it takes a, about a second or two for the container to launch and it, it's up and running. You can run a Docker container LS. That's how you can see your running containers. And here's our CSR, CSRX01 you know, container instance. Here's the ID. Here's the image that was used to, to load it. You know, it's been up about seven seconds, right? And then now I need to, now that it's up and running, I can attach those two transit networks to this CSRX01 container. So let's go back to the notepad document. And I have two commands connected here, two Docker network connect commands. Join together with the double ampersand. Let's just paste that in there, and this will, you know, connect the CSRX01 instance to the untrust network, and this will be the IP address assigned to the first interface in that network. And the same thing with the trust network. So let's connect it. 
And now I have a running instance that's connected to networks. So there's one other command I mentioned where we'll do the docker exec. And this command will connect us to our running container. And we'll log in as root. The password was lab123 and the host name was set to csrx01 for me. So now, for example, if I run a show interfaces, here's my giggy 000, right? This was assigned to the trust, uh, the untrust, excuse me, Docker network, and it's up and running. Now, I don't have any configuration. I can do configure if, if you'd like, load, set, you know, terminal. Uh, and then I have some configuration that will work. It's in set commands in this file. It'll create, a, you know, it'll sign the same IP addresses to the interfaces that, that Docker used. It sets a, a NAT rule that NATs, you know, from the trust zone to the untrust zone. It'll, it'll perform source NAT and destination NAT. And there's, you know, some security policies. So I can copy that, come back, paste it in. Use the control D and then I do a commit. And then so now my interface is, well, I forgot to set system authentic. You have to set the root password, uh, set system, root authentication, plain text password. Set the root password. You, you have to, when you load a config on there, set the root password before it'll accept a commit. Okay, my commit process is complete. Now if I do a, I'll put a run in front of that since I'm in configuration mode. I'll actually see more information about the interfaces that I have configured on the platform. Here's the logical unit. Here's the IP address that's been assigned to it. I should have internet connectivity. You have to type it right every time. Let me, let me try that ping command again. And there's my ping replies coming back. Now, when I'm done, I can exit, you know, configuration mode. I use exit to get back to my local command prompt. And I can run a docker stop csrx01 command and stop that container. I still have the existing volumes. Uh, I still have the networks created. So then once I launch more containers, I can simply attach them to those existing objects. I don't have to build the network every time and, and create the volumes every time. I do have to attach them. Once the container is uh, running, now the uh, when you stop the container, it seems to take around 10 to 11 seconds for the container to fully shut down. They spin up really quickly. A second or two, the container's up and running. It does take a few seconds for it to successfully stop. And then that's this learning byte. So in this learning byte, we used Docker to launch a CSRX instance. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.